Reef Bum is sponsored by Bulk Reef Supply and Ecotech Marine. Somebody, I saw a comment in the uh, in the chat about um, flow in a peninsula tank. There was a question from Problem Prone uh, Reef Boom. Is it possible to have powerheads only at one end of a five foot peninsula and achieve good random flow, or should I put some on the viewing panel? And I have two MP40s and two hydros gyros on one end now. So you know, if if you weren't on the show right now, Steve, we could we could talk about uh, you know putting putting uh, powerheads on the uh, viewing end panel of a peninsula tank. I mean, I I do it. I, I've got a six foot long peninsula tank, and I've got two MP40s on the viewing end panel, but. But Steve has this talent of not having any visible power heads or wires in his um, tanks. And um, we talked at length about this at Reefstock. And I'm going to show a, um, a picture of the circulation chamber. We've got a Versa pump in there. So that's kind of a, uh, a bit of a behind the, um, the, it's behind the panel. I guess you've got a panel that covers that up. But talk right here to my talk left. Talk to us about what you do in terms of um, hiding all the power heads and wires and, and, and such a clean look. Okay, so first off, I can't possibly stomach any visual pollution in the tank. So that's no plumbings, no power heads, no wires. To me, that is a zit on the Mona Lisa. I just not. That is not going to be in my DNA to do. So I will find ways around it. You are unique, sir. And you I... are very unique in that sense. <laughs> I don't know anybody else that can do it as well as you can do that. So I designed this system. We're back to my cold water system is uh, designed at how I did it. But again, the flow is basically top to bottom. And everybody's uh, peninsula tank, and mine being no different, has a center overflow at one end, which creates two alcoves on the left and right. Everyone has it. And that's just dead space. Well, when I designed this tank and had it built, uh, I had that front wall, rather than creating uh, the two alcoves, just go straight across, and now you have two wet chambers. And uh, uh, that created a spot where I could put two now very powerful. I don't use, quote, power heads. I'm actually using Vectra L2s. So Vectors. these are pretty powerful pumps. And, you know, we're talking 3,000 plus gallons per hour shooting through theirs. And there's three of them in the tank. So that's creating the flow on a, you know, the Mobius uh, reef crest. So it's uh, variable, variable the flows. And it's powerful enough between those three when they sync up. I get a whirlpool at the other end. It'll go all the way down. So to the mechanically, what's going on? You've got these <clears throat> chambers. You've got the the pumps that are pointing downwards. All three pumps are pointing downwards. And and the, no, 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 that's the intake. That's the intake. That's the okay, intake. Okay, so that's the intake. Yeah. I got you. All right. The nozzle is pointing out through the wall, which is going through rock work. Uh -huh. And when I created the end rock work, I created multiple holes on there. So you can't guess which one is the flow coming out of. <laughs> it's completely hidden. And to tell you how OCD I am, when I first did it, I went, oh, God, the volute is white. And I can see the volute. God, I got to <laughs> fix that. I can't take it. So I covered it up. And I'm, okay, that works. But the inside of the volute is still white, and I can now see that. So I took a black piece of vinyl tubing and stuffed it in there. It's a little <laughs> bit like putting your finger over the hose, and it completely you blacked it out. You truly are OCD. You not see it. <laughs> it really was. So it completely blacked it out, and now it's perfect. But the other thing that's important with it, it's truly accessible. All I have to do is reach down, pull it out, clean it, put it back in. And those chambers Brilliant. actually kind of look like uh, or kind of act like uh, catch basins. All the detritus in the tank kind of collects in the bottom of mm. those. So during a water change, I'll just vacuum out the bottom. In fact, let me just, I'll show you on the intake. I'm just going to leave the camera yeah. here very yeah. quickly, right next to me here. Uh, and I'm going to grab what an intake screen is because I forgot to bring it out. This here is at the base of each of those chambers. This is the intake screen. Mm. These are spare ones, and they just sit in the bottom of the, t of the uh, chamber. This is where water sucking in from behind the rockwork into here and then flowing out up top, shooting out. So I have the circular motion. This also provides the perfect spot to put your return from the sump. Mm. 
I don't need to have nozzles and look at nozzles coming from the <laughs> sump into the tank, nor have any of the back siphoning during a power outage. They just dump into each of the chambers on both sides, and I let the power so the, uh, the vector return pumps. nozzles are above the water line. Correct. Okay. And it flows into both sides. And I don't put a whole lot of water through the sump, just enough to keep the heater and make the he heater and chiller yeah. effective. So it's probably putting through maybe 2,000 gallons an hour. So back. no possibility of any so back siphoning. Oh, God, yeah. no. It only fills up. My sump is 200 gallons of itself, and I'd only fill it up maybe two-thirds the way on a power outage. Yep. You know, it doesn't fill up. Yep. So that I designed that way back from the cold system. So this system inherited those dynamics, but it works perfectly. So there is nothing in the tank. There's no plumbing in the tank. There's very little plumbing anywhere here. Uh, other, it just drops down to the sump, comes right back up. But